And now, here to let you know there is no perfect movie, here is Tyler Wolf. Thank you, Caleb. What's going on, everybody? I'm Tyler, and in continuing a list of movies that I didn't get the chance to review while they were in theaters, I'm here to let you know that Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot is no perfect movie. And it follows the sobriety of real-life cartoonist John Callahan, played by Joaquin Phoenix. We get a very brief glimpse of the life he led before his car crash as a result of drunk driving, and through rehabilitation with the help of a a uh, sponsor played by Jonah Hill, and along with him rediscovering his passion for work as a cartoonist, he comes to terms with some of the more tragic aspects of his life. And every time I went to this local art house feeder right by the place where I work, I saw the trailer for this movie quite a few times, and I was looking forward to it just because of the fact that the true life story did sound really interesting. I like Joaquin Phoenix as an actor. Not as much as a lot of diehard fans of his, but I do think he is an underrated actor. I like the fact that Jonah Hill's doing much more serious work. I like the other cast members. And it just felt like a unique perspective of a true life story because many biopics go through some of the same beat by beat tropes of how someone rises and falls and rises again towards the end. This movie doesn't do that. If anything, the structure that it goes for is as slice of life as you can get. It is very loose, it jumps back and forth between different parts of Callahan's life, which was a little jarring and a little distracting at first, but once you get the rhythm and once you get to understand the kind of person that Callahan was, it makes a lot more sense as to why he keeps jumping back and forth and why some parts of his life are focused on more than others. And it goes to show just how good of a director Gus Van Sant is. I don't think he's done anything this good in quite a long time. He uses a lot of different filmmaking techniques to make you feel as if you're in the moment with these characters. There are a lot of over-the-shoulder shots, which is something I'm not always adaptable to, but they make it work in this movie. And one thing I noticed in regards to cinematography is that many shots start out as a wide where the character is far enough from a distance from the camera and then it zooms in on them, especially in key moments where they're realizing things about themselves, realizing that their emotional responses to certain things are not what they should be. And it added to the emotions that you're supposed to feel for these characters, Callahan especially. And Joaquin Phoenix delivers yet another committed performance to the point where I actually did think that he was quadriplegic. It left my mind for a second because in regards to certain movements that he does while in his wheelchair and how he holds objects with his arms was so committed and so authentic in regards to how he replicates that kind of experience. It was really outstanding and admirable. I gotta be honest about that. And in regards to how his personality is portrayed where... He does want to recover from his injuries, but he does so deeply want to still drink away his pain the same way he did before. And the amount of crude content that he puts into his cartoons, which was more than I had bargained for when I heard about the story, I do appreciate the fact that this movie is not afraid to hide the fact that even disabled people are just as capable of being cruel and shallow and just completely apathetic about life in general as any other able-bodied person would. And I feel like a lot of Hollywood movies really want to avoid that because I guess in regu I guess in people's minds it comes off as being offensive. It's not. It's just truth. The chemistry that Phoenix has with Rooney Mara as this caretaker that he becomes friends with and kind of has a relationship with, I thought was handled beautifully for one specific reason. There are no romantic moments where you feel like they're going to split up or that he's going to drive her away like most movies about alcoholics would. Once they meet up, it gradually increases in regards to chemistry and amount of time they spend together. And then it stops from there, which is much more authentic and realistic of a romance than you would see in any other movie, whether it be mainstream or independent. Jonah Hill is also really good in this movie. He starts off a little too shallow, and the way he portrays AA sponsors was a little off because he does have some moments where he speaks in a very pretentious, superior than that way. And then there are other moments that feel a lot more authentic where he is cursing at people whenever they're out of line, which was a nice human touch. 
And when you do learn things about his past and what he's going to face in the future, you do feel more sorry for him. Believe it or not, it's when he does act like what we expect of an AA sponsor that kind of bugs me about this movie is that... Here's the thing. I wholeheartedly disagree with the philosophies that AA teaches through their 12-step programs. The two first steps especially, where you admit you're powerless over alcohol and that only a higher power can help you overcome your addiction. It's basically suggesting that addiction can only be cured through religious conversion. That doesn't sound like a fact. It just sounds like a way to convert people. And it just promotes this idea that alcoholism is a disease. And I know a lot of people, a lot of scientists and doctors feel that addiction is a disease, which what stops me from thinking that is that we don't treat it like it is. At the end of the day, AA sponsors will still tell you that your behavior is your fault. And somehow the only choice you have is giving your life to God or anything like that? No. There's more to it than that. If you have any physical diseases that affect your behavior, you don't call your ex-girlfriend and say that you're a dick. This is one of the other reasons I'm glad that this and Beautiful Boy don't really address the motivations for drinking all that much, other than the fact that there are a million motivations for having an addiction in the first place. The other is that, like this movie points out, much more so than in Beautiful Boy, I gotta admit, is that whatever your motivation is, it's not a good enough excuse. And there were so many comments that I got on my Beautiful Boy video where it's just like, it's important to focus on the motivation. I'm like, why? Because it's still their fault. Why would it matter? And there are movies and shows that I like that focus heavily on motivation, like Patrick Melrose this year, one of the best works of television I'd seen in my life. But that show was not just solely focused on alcoholism. It was focused on dysfunctional families, among other things. High class as well. Movies like Don't Worry He Won't Get Far on Foot and Beautiful Boy are focused solely on alcoholism and addiction. If there were any other motivations thrown in, it would have felt jumbled, it would have felt it would have felt ham-fisted, it would have felt like there were they were showing us way too many things at once. And that's why I'm glad that these two movies don't. I will admit, though, I would have liked to have seen more of his work as a cartoonist because I love just how dirty of a sense of humor that he has even after his accident. And even when people tell him just how crude and horrible his sense of humor is and that he just takes it in stride because he loves what he's doing, it's something he's passionate about and that he's not going to stop, I really enjoyed that. Plus, I thought his cartoons were pretty funny, especially when the movie portrays them as if they were a moving animation. Those moments were really fun. But like I said before, addiction is the main focus, and it should stay that way. Don't Worry He Won't Get Far on Foot isn't a great movie, but it is a good one, and it is very refreshing to see a true life story told in a way that is not cliched in the slightest, thankfully. Like I said, it does take a little getting used to in regards to the unique style that it has, but at the same time, Gus Van Sant's direction Joaquin Phoenix, Jonah Hill, and Rooney Mara's performances, along with just how interesting the real-life story is, makes me glad that I saw this movie. And I'm going to give Don't Worry He Won't Get Far on Foot a 3.5 out of 5. Guys, thanks as always for watching, and I am about to start watching You Were Never Really Here. That's the other movie I'm going to be talking about because Joaquin Phoenix did two Amazon movies. So let me know in the comments below, which one was better, this or You Were Never Really Here? All right, Caleb, tune us out. Be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more No Perfect Movie reviews.